you are watching Redicon. To understand the impact of herniated disc, we need to revise the radiological anatomy of the vertebral body. On the left, you can see sagittal sequences with a line marking the level of axial slices seen on the right side, with arrows showing multiple structures. The first sequence on the top left shows slice through upper L2 vertebral body, which is at the level of pedicle. We need to remember that the pedicle occupies upper 50% of the vertebral body height and nerve root is tucked just below it due to mismatch between vertebral column and the cord levels. Nerve root comes off the cord at much higher level but exits the vertebral column at much lower level, arcing around the undersurface of the pedicle. It really means that L2 nerve root exits approximately at the mid-body of L2 and not at the level of L2 L3 disc. Now you can see at the middle slices at the level of lower end plate, nerve root is already just outside the exit foramen and a central disc herniation at this level is unlikely to cause nerve root impingement. However, a lateral or far lateral disc herniation at this level could still impinge this nerve root. On the bottom pair of images, a cross section through the disc shows the thecal sac and a facet joint while relevant nerve root is already outside the exit foramen. The next point is disc disease incidence which advances with age. As you can see on this graph, 20 to 40 years of population, 36% will have a degenerated disc. At 50 years, 85 to 95% will have a degenerated disc in cervical or lumbar spine. The incidence increases with age. However, with modern trends of extended hours in cars, computers and office-based jobs, incidence of lower back pain and disc disease is also on the rise. In my practice, I see disc disease tear in the annulus fibrosis and positive effects even in late teenagers these days. It is worth remembering that abnormal findings on MRI frequently do not relate to the symptoms and vice versa. It is because radiculopathy can be arising from not only the mechanical compression of the disc but also from the inflammatory reaction from a torn or herniated disc when it may not be directly touching the nerve root. Disc herniation is most common at the lumbosacral junction, probably due to increased curvature switching from the mobile lumbar spine to fixed sacral column. In approximately 90% of the cases, lumbar disc herniations are either at L4, L5 or L5S1. In cervical spine, C4 to C7 are the more common levels meaning lower, lower cervical spine is more commonly affected than upper cervical spine. This video is presented in collaboration with Radicon Institute of Radiology. You are welcome to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the notification bell for updates. For more modules in radiology CMEs, please visit our website www.radicon.org.